Welcome to St. Mary's. Please join us for the entrance hymn number 758. All are welcome. 758. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Hear the love of Christ shall end division. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good, afternoon. Good afternoon. Certainly welcome to all as we gather on this just lovely fall day. So we gather, we hear about the remnant that remains faithful and are welcomed by God. We hear about the blind man who Jesus restores his sight so that he can see. We, we seek always to have our eyes open to the things of God. We prepare for the sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sin. We ask God for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. See yeah. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, shout with joy for Jacob, exult at the head of the nations, proclaim your praise and say, the Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them back from the land of the north. I will gather them from the ends of the world with the blind and the lame in their midst, the mothers and those with child. They shall return as an immense throng. They departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to brooks of water on a level road so that none shall stumble. For I am a father to Israel, Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord, the Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of i 
The second reading is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness. And so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up. Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Certainly, um, welcome to everyone on this 
gorgeous, this beautiful, beautiful day, this fall day, as we come together in unity with Jesus Christ for the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous time of the year. Uh, you see all the colors. You see all the beauty. Do we recognize? Do we see where this beauty is coming from? God gives us the promise of salvation. We must see with our vision through Christ how to achieve this salvation. God has given this salvation promise to all, no matter what, no matter who you are, no matter what shape you are, no matter where you come from or what you did, he grants every one of us salvation. But we have to see. The first reading we hear about the prophet Jeremiah, he gives great hope that no matter how blind or lame a person is, God is with you forever if you follow him. In the second reading, we hear the message that God, the high priest, has petitioned his son, Jesus Christ, to be the high priest for eternity, forever. He will not pass in death like Melchizedek and Aaron. Jesus will live forever showing us the way to salvation. We see Jesus is very comfortable in who we are and wants us to bring us to his Father. But we must see our sins to allow God to forgive us. God is okay with who we are. He wants us to see him. In the gospel, it spells out that we must believe God will give us the vision through his son, Jesus Christ. But we must believe, not just see it with our eyes, but believe it in our heart. How many of us have cried to Jesus failing and hurting and cried out to Jesus. Why? Not to recognize he was right there. He was right there with us. Because we didn't see. We didn't see him there at that time because we were hurting and we were in a black place. Our vision was dark. No matter who you are, what you have done, God is showing us all the way to salvation. Now I have a little story that tracks off and, and, and shows some pretty good examples about vision. Well, about three years ago, I found out that I have this condition and this condition is called macular degenerate disease. And I went to the doctor to get my vision checked, and they told me to read a chart. I didn't see a chart. I didn't see a chart. Everything was black in the middle. I didn't see nothing. Kind of like spiritually. Sometimes we forget about Jesus. Although we know Jesus, he's on our right side. We still see, see good with one eye, but one eye is blinded, and all we see is the black. 
We have a choice there. We have a choice whether we look out the right side or the left side, the dark side or the light side. We have that choice. Do you want to see the bright side or the dull side? When you're going through spiritual dark darkness, you need to recognize it. Spiritual darkness is a place where you're spiritually starving and not knowing what way to go. Been there. And I know many of us have been too. Then the struggles came. As I tried to adjust through time with this new problem, um, being blind in my left eye, I had all kinds of challenges. One would be driving. Never thought. But if I closed my right eye, I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> I couldn't see the road right. I didn't know where I was going. That's when we rely spiritually on Jesus. That's when we rely, we're in a dark place. We need to look in the good eye, our heart, our soul, our mind. We need to look through the good heart and see what way to go how to drive. I had all kinds of things going on. I struggled with bright lights. They blind me. If I'm driving at night and a light is coming right to me, especially if they got their brights on, whoo-wee, <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> because I, I can't see, even, at, even with my right eye, it, 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 it's something in that realm that I can't see. Ever been there with your spiritualness? Where we don't know where we're going and don't know how to get there? Where we're struggling? That's when we need to open up our heart and our eyes and see Jesus. See, the thing about lights is I love it when I walk into a room and there's real nice bright lights. Real bright. And then that makes me see real, real good. I can see great. That's what the light of Christ does to all of us. The light of Christ shines on us and brings us to him. Being basked in his light, when both of my eyes are open and I quit thinking about my vision and start thinking about God, he allows me to see and he allows each and every one of you to see when we do that, open up our hearts to Jesus and allow him to see through his heart, to see through him. Walk in Christ's light, and it will lead your vision to Christ. Look at the light, and you want to see so bad this beautiful light, but cannot until you look through the heart of Jesus. One of the other problems with my vision is I can't make out colors very well. Sometimes colors confuse me. Sometimes they, I can't determine whether it's a little orange or maybe red. Or, and, and, and I struggle with the colors. And that reminds me of this season. Do we think that God... Do we thank God for showing us all the beauty in the world? Or do we just complain? Oh my, it's getting cold out. Or do you look and see the colors and see how God has blessed us with the beautiful harvest season? 
spiritual blindness can be very, very tough. I know there's a few in here that know me pretty good and know that I like to hunt. And recently, this year, I really come upon some pretty tough luck, if you ask me. Um, I, I worked so hard at hunting, and I worked, I went down southern Ohio, and we hunted, and I had a deer come up to me within, for me to father, right underneath me. And well, it was getting dark, and I couldn't see it. I could see that it was there, and my buddy was hunting in the same tree with me. We were filming and doing some things, and he, he he's like, it's right there. I was like, I didn't see it. How many times in our life has Christ been right there? Right there. Jesus has been right there, and we don't even see him. We don't even recognize him. And this struggle went on. I was just having so much trouble, like we do in our life sometimes, when we struggle through our lives with bad things and things. I was struggling. And I went out again, and it happened again at like 7, 10 after 7 or so. It was just getting dark, and it was half light and half dark, and I really struggled then. And I seen a really nice buck come out, and I thought, oh, oh, and I pulled up the bow, and I'm trying to, no, uh uh I couldn't see. I couldn't see. Another disaster in my life, just, I know I'm exaggerating a little bit, but, um, so I'm, I'm just like, oh, so what do we do spiritually at a time like that? Do we accept defeat? No, we don't accept defeat. We give ourselves to Jesus. And I, I really was searching about, thinking about, do I just give this up and forget about it and cave in to the devil and, and, the, and all this stuff and say, I quit because I can't see no more and I am so frustrated I can't take this anymore? Or do we pray to God and thank him that puts us in a situation where I could sit out there and I can enjoy myself crazily until something walks up to me and I can't see it. <laughs> I just enjoy it. And I thought, no, I'm going to go back out. So I went back out on Wednesday and I went back out and I thought, I'm going to check this guy out. I really want to see if this buck is real big or not. And sure enough, he walked out about 10 minutes earlier than he did the day before. And I was seeing good. The light was on. <laughs> okay? I think we all know the end of the story because I'm smiling right now. And I ain't talking about the bad thing. But the thing is, the lesson behind that is great, great ending, okay? But the lesson behind that is that I failed and I failed and I failed. And I was showing the hard times in my life. I was showing hard things. And it, that persistence, that prayer, that coming through to the church and getting my food and giving my vision and keeping me going, those are the things we have to do. We have to keep coming to Christ and seeing through his heart, seeing Jesus Christ. There is a perfect prescription to fix our spiritual blindness. The Eucharist. The Eucharist gives us a vision to see through the heart of Jesus and gives us a vision to bring us to God. No matter what we've done, who we've done anything to, no matter anything, who we are, what we look like, it doesn't matter. Jesus is there to open up our heart and our eyes so that we can clearly see the way to salvation.
the Eucharist will give us the vision. And it only brings me up to talk just a second about anointed for mission. A uh, thing that's coming up the, November 9th. Um, we're going to hear about later on. Or should I say, should we call it anointed for vision? And it's a really good time to concentrate on what God, Jesus, is showing us. Where and how we're supposed to go. How do we see through Christ? And this is a great time to come and get a very good vision of your mission. We see through the heart of Christ when we serve the church. We must be spiritually, our, we must seek spiritual vision to seek salvation. Look through the heart of Jesus. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, <clears throat> the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Gracious God, Bartimaeus had the courage to ask Jesus for the ability to see. He now offers to you our needs and prayers, trusting that you will give us what we truly need. For Pope Francis, and especially for Bishop Thomas, as he celebrates the 10th anniversary of installation as the Bishop of Toledo, May all who lead the church be inspired by God as they call us to holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the United States of America, as we approach Election Day, may all of us seek to be informed as we exercise our right to vote. And may those elected to office promote equality and justice for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may provide a different way of seeing to those who are seeking a deeper sense of meaning. May we guide them on the path to eternal happiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who are blind or struggle with other disabilities, may they know of our love and receive the assistance they need to ease the burdens they face daily. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessing on our parish faith enrichment day, anointed for mission. Many, may many people 
grow in the understanding of the power of our baptism and our call to honor and serve Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those the Lord is calling to serve as priests in the Diocese of Toledo, may their participation of the Holy Eucharist lead them to an offer lead them to offer their lives in service of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or suffering in body, mind, or spirit, may they confidently approach Jesus as we receive what they need to sustain their life and get to heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Maxine Sanders. May all the faithful departed be with Jesus in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in the Parish Book of Intentions and our personal prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, you welcome us and offer us what we need to fulfill our deepest desires. We ask that you hear our prayers and grant them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us for the offertory number 752, Pieces Flowing 752. flowing like a
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed a man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold 
him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. Please join us for the communion hymn, One Bread, One Body, body 589, One Bread, One Body.
Good evening. I would like to share with you all about an awesome opportunity to enrich our faith. Hopefully all of you have received the mailing and, um, about, this, about this event. It's on Saturday, November 9th at St. Mar on Saturday, November 9th, St. Mary's, St. Michael's, and St. Joseph would like to invite you all, high school age and up, to a day of fellowship and spiritual enrichment enrichment, focusing on our baptismal call as Catholic Christians. This includes teachers, catechists, musicians, all pastoral and social meeting groups, ushers, maintenance people, etc., etc., and anyone not mentioned who considers themselves as one of the faithful. St. Michael's will host this event, which will begin with checking in prior to 9.30 at the gym entrance and then gathering in the gym to hear presenters from the liturgical training publications, better known as LTP. They will lead us in four separate sessions, all exploring and thinking about how our baptismal connects us with God and each other and calls us as priest, prophet, and king. We would like you to register as soon as possible we will certainly take walk-in registrations, but in order to make sure there are enough event packets and food, we're asking you to register by November 1st. You may register by going on the LTP, LTP website or the flyer we sent you also has a place to sign up, which is at the bottom, um, to sign up and drop off in the collection. I have also placed extra flyers in the back of church. Lunch will be provided and a bookstore of the LTP materials are available to purchase. This event is free to all. We hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you. Let us pray. For your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So for that um, event on November 9th, so that's a Saturday, 
It's like some might remember that we've done Women's Day and couples um, gatherings and retreats. Last year we had um, a, a Men's Day here. So it's along those same lines. Just re really everybody's invited, the chance to just be enriched and, and nurtured in our faith. So, so really, if you can, um, get online or, or fill out that registration form and get that back to us as soon as possible. We need to let them know um, so that they, they know how much material to bring as well as the food and, and the other arrangements. So, so, so really, hope that all of you already have that on your ca calendar and are planning to attend. Uh, a few other events. So um, this Friday is November 1st, All Saints Day, Holy Day of Obligation. You can see the Mass schedule. There's a Thursday evening Mass here, and then Friday starting out at 6.30 in the morning at Blakesley and go on through the day. So make plans as we honor the saints on that Holy Day of Obligation. Also on um, um, Thursday, there will not be school Mass in the morning because the, the kids and, and all will be coming on November 1st on Friday, but on Thursday morning at, at 8.30, the St. Mary's students will come over and do a living rosary. So all are certainly welcome and invited to join them for that. And, and, and then also a reminder that so as we start um, the month, month of November, that the Saturday Mass will move to St. Michael in Hicksville. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power, thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join us for a closing hymn, number 648. Sing praise to our Creator, number 648. Sing praise to our Creator, redeemed of Adam's race, God's children. Who